be diagnosed with dementia. So you have a one in chance of having lost your mind. Let's talk about what's good for the brain, bad for the brain, starting with AI. I have frankly become pretty addicted to using ChatGPT. Astonishingly, MIT found a 47% collapse in activity and brain connections when people wrote with ChatGPT. After using ChatGPT, participants couldn't reliably quote their own essays minutes later and their memory scores plunged. And when the AI group was forced to write without help in session four, their brain stayed in low gear under engagement, showing the cognitive debt lingers even after the tool is taken away. It kind of scared me a little bit because I use these tools every single day. And this suggests that it's taking away some of our critical thinking and cre- creativity and long-term learning. It frightened me. 50% of people 85 and older will be diagnosed with dementia. So you have a one in two chance of having lost your mind. But is this a tool that's going to decrease cognitive load that then increases my risk? What's cognitive load? How much work my brain actually does. It's like going from a 20 pound weight to a two pound weight. And you're not nearly as strong. The studies that support this idea that if you have less cognitive load, you're at high risk of dementia. Can you make that link really clear for me? So think of it as use it or lose it. The more you use your brain and new learning is a major strategy to prevent Alzheimer's disease. People who do not engage in lifelong learning have a higher risk, significantly higher People who do not do as well in school or who drop out of school early have a higher risk of dementia. And so the, the more you're engaged, the more you engage the neurons in your brain, the stronger they are. And so now we're going to engage them less. And that's a concern. 